I love this lady. We started out in Shrek um, and clung to each other desperately through the entire process. Um, but after that, I said to Janine, gosh, I'd love to write another musical where there aren't, you know, 20 people giving you notes at every moment. I'd like to do it like I write one of my plays where it's just me by myself. And she said, yeah, let's do that. In fact, why don't we adapt one of your plays? And I said, well, what do you mean? And she pulled Kimberly off the shelf and said, I think this play sings. I I'm not sure I could put it into words. I think you just read something and you think this has this could be the beginning of another journey and some things are complete and there's no room for music. And I love it because it's um, an early play of David's and often with early plays there's more to explore because your craft hasn't really caught up to your age. And so you can in revisiting it, which I really what I love about what what he did as the as the playwright is when someone's in the room and wonders, I wonder what the playwright meant. It's like, well, he's right here. And, and I would often do that and think like, well, where did this come from? Who is this like? What, how has this happened in your life? And we go back and forth. And then, you know, singing comes from, you know, if a character on stage or if you get into the street, although there are a lot of people singing now on the street, but they, it's what's happening in their heads and their hearts. There are a lot of secrets and what they want and what they think about when they yearn for, and the audience gets to hear it. And you can't do that in a play. You can't, and you also can't have two people sing the same thought in a play. There are so many people agree, but they don't know that the other person agrees with them. So the audience gets to experience that, and that deepens the story, which I really love. What I love most about Janine, obviously she's you know the most gifted composer working on Broadway. That aside, she also happens to be um, one of the most gifted dramaturgs that I know, that she understands story structure and the architecture of playwriting the way that not many composers do, that we speak the same language, which makes my job so much easier. I actually, um, when, when we're in note sessions, I often quote David some of his lectures because he's at Juilliard. He's, he's um, one of two heads of the playwriting program at Juilliard. And he has sent me some of his lectures of, of the, the journey and, and, and in playwriting. And I really love that. And I feel like you just can't learn enough about that. And he knows I pull books off of his shelf, you know, Arthur Miller and that, because I feel like, you know, the um, American musical is a, is, it's, it's an art form that, that's, that's our art form, and I think it's so amazing, it's so possible for, for so many things to be expressed in it, and, and so we, we, we can debate, and also David was in speech and debate, so we know how to debate. It's always good debate, though. Good debate. Yeah. Right? Not a fight. No, it actually isn't. No, I mean, what, what is exciting about working with well, our, our relationship is such that we can dig at a moment uh, until we find what it needs to be and that, and that neither of us are precious about anything. If something needs to go, it, it goes. And that's not always true with collaboration. People can sometimes cling to something because they've worked so hard on it. But for us, it's like, out, it needs to go. And sometimes things come back in, but that's what keeps the the stuff going and making it better is always examining always investigating is this it is that it can it be a little bit better can we go back to what we had um and that's that's a good collaboration i think what we 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 spend a lot of time just talking about what happens when things it's all about time it's the time that you spend it's the time that something event happens to you when you're too young and you're ill-equipped and then you learn how to to do it while you're actually the age that, you know, it catches up because Kimberly becomes the age that they were when they had Kim. And th- that we're at that very moment. And that's dramatically, there's so much to, that, that can happen. My friends that I know that are young parents, they almost grow up together with their, with their children. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the ideas that I was most intrigued by when I started writing the play, and it's certainly held over for the musical, is the idea of a character who looks older than she is, she's 16, so she's dealing with all the stuff that a 16-year-old is dealing with, while also simultaneously dealing with her own mortality, which is not something that a lot of young people, some do, unfortunately, but um, that juxtaposition with parents who had this kid when they themselves were teenagers, who ended up sort of stunted in their growth as people. And so the fact that the youngest character looks the oldest, behaves the most mature in a household of adults that act like children. Just the mixed upness of it all is what uh, I was most drawn to as a writer, that I wanted to get in there and put it in the blender 
and see them all dealing with all of these really difficult situations um, in funny ways, in serious ways, in real ways, I hope, um, that I, again, that I hoped would make a good play and now a good musical. We never, ever want long shirts over leggings ever again. I only want to see long shirts over leggings. Those are my favorites. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I heard it. Okay. And it just reminded me what a great... Also with a vest. That thing with the vest and then... No, no never. Yeah. With a blunt haircut. I mean, no. Yeah. Except for TLC. Because they, they ruled. Anything that they wore is okay. So maybe I take it all back. There. See? I knew I'd get you on board. <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? The 90s have sort of come back fashion-wise. And so yes. our brilliant costumes, like, is it the 90s or is it 2022? It's so beautiful and perfect. But everything comes around. Makeup was all right, yeah, all right, there you go. I was wearing this in the 90s. And haven't changed. No, I just took stopped. all my shoulder pads out. That's it. I, and gave them to me. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate them. Put them in my bra.